Ready for a wild ride? Crop dusters are still flying just about everywhere in America. There are more than 1,400 pilots in the U.S. dusting millions of acres of crops while avoiding power lines and water towers and the ground. Here's Josh Bittner. Flying is the ultimate freedom. You leave the ground and all your problems, all your worries, they're behind you. Like it's you and it's the airplane. Agricultural aviator Jordan Omstead is entering his fifth year of flying the friendly skies over his home state of Iowa. After graduating the Air Force Academy in 2006, Omstead spent time in Afghanistan and Iraq in the military and as a private contractor before coming home to pursue a childhood passion. I like to tell people I had to get out of the Air Force to start my flying career. My dad was a pilot. I grew up on a farm, so this is the combination of agriculture and aviation. So I get to be a part of all the attributes that I really love. So. USDA figures reveal the Hawkeye State, a national leader in corn and soybean production, planted over 23 million acres of both crops combined in 2017 at a value of $13.6 billion. But even robust yields are susceptible to pest, disease, and fertility pressures, which, if left unchecked, can negatively impact farm revenues. That's where pilots like Omstead soar into the picture. The vast majority of what we do is insecticide and fungicide. Aerial application, or crop dusting, began nearly a century ago in the U.S and over time has reaped the benefits of technological advancement like other wings of agriculture. Several types of growers and ranchers can employ the method, along with herbicides, dry fertilizers, and cover crop seeding. According to the National Agricultural Aviation Association, a Washington, D.C.-based industry advocate, nationally, 71 million acres of cropland are treated from above every year in addition to millions of acres of pasture and rangeland. In Iowa, that amounts to a more than $214 million annual industry, with the mix applied to around 5 million acres, as estimated by the Iowa Agricultural Aviation Association. We actually put it on better than a ground rig, because a ground rig, they'll go out there in winds that we won't work in. Cliff Crowell owns Stardust Ag Aviation. He taught Omstead the trade before hiring him as a subcontractor and will one day pass the business down to him. Crowell, a Navy veteran, launched his career in crop dusting over 20 years ago, landing in Iowa by chance. When I got out of the military, I had a buddy that lived here. So I flipped a coin and told him uh, Des Moines, Iowa, Little Rock. We went uh, heads, so I wound up in Des Moines. <laughs> Though ground applicators might have a different take on best methods, Crowell says diligence is paramount to ironing out any shortcomings. We had, do have some drift problems, but we're dealing with those and working with those constantly as far as the safety aspect of it. But uh, no, I think the, uh, the airplane does a better job and is a safer way of applying it. Critics charge all manner of spray applications are susceptible to contamination and runoff, which can threaten the environment and human health. But aerial proponents point out all of their liquid pesticides are approved by the Environmental Protection Agency and say they employ precision techniques. Without getting into a lot of aerodynamics, just the forces coming off this wing are pushing the, the air behind the airplane down into the crops. And the way we've got the booms positioned, they're releasing chemical into that air, so it forces it down with it. That said, the closer we are to the crops, the less fall time there is for that chemical to evaporate. So we get just as close as we can safely. Omstead references the myriad safety precautions emphasized by the industry and his mentor, like pre-flight analysis, annual inspections, and scouting fields for people, obstacles, and other hazards. Safety is always an issue, just like ground-based applications or that type of thing. We want to make sure that we're doing it correctly and well. Recently retired Iowa State Extension Agricultural Engineer Mark Hanna emphasizes the land-grant university's outreach efforts to local flight crews, while national training to calibrate equipment also takes place ahead of flight season. 
We spend a, a fair bit of time every year working with aerial applicators, doing a good patternation check off their aircraft, uh, making sure that we've got a, a, a good uniform application, make sure that we don't have uh, some of the things that, that might cause some, some off-target movement or drift on that aircraft. Over the past several years, Stardust Ag Aviation has seen a steady rise in customers seeking aerial cover crop seeding. Released at a higher altitude than spray liquids, the boom accounted for over 10% of the company's business in 2017. That's good news for Iowa, which is highly susceptible to runoff. Cover crop has some distinct uh, advantages, particularly for water quality. Uh, it ke helps keep soil in place, but another thing it does is it uses nutrients uh, down in the soil, and particularly nitrates. Some see growth areas for conservation and precision agriculture as food production increases to serve a growing global population. Going forward, Hannah says it's possible the industry could benefit from unmanned systems working in tandem with pilots. But for Amstead, it's easy enough now to use an iPhone to map routes to his customers' fields and listen to his favorite playlists all day long. Sometimes there's some classic rock in there, sometimes there's some Beethoven, just a little bit of everything. Tough day at the office, that's for sure.